Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. My apologies for the delay these past couple of days. I was on a recent trip to the Fort Worth area here in Texas, and I was able to visit two new locations regarding ghosts and spirits, so be on the lookout for those videos soon. I had a great time visiting those locations so I'm going to produce those videos throughout this week and there's going to be a whole bunch of pictures including one location that I believe I caught some other activity as well so so excited to show you now going back to the cryptids and monsters theme I promised everyone I was going to talk about five more videos based on your past suggestions I'm going to still do that but I wanted to mix in a cryptid of the week here and so that way I haven't done one of these in a while and I wanted to see what the random page showcased and sure enough it came up with a very fascinating cryptid that I have not talked about yet but what makes it also so fascinating is the fact that there is a real life basis for it here today in this world that I'm gonna show pictures of later on but it makes you scratch your head and wonder if this was truly the thing that inspired this quote-unquote mythical serpent or dragon as it's sometimes referred to so what is this thing well I'm talking about the very strange creature very fascinating one known as the Joculus which you're looking at a drawing of here basically it's your average snake but for the fact that there may be in some interpretations a small set of wings and at other times it seems to have small set of front legs but otherwise that's it it's your average snake I don't know exactly what size these things are I guess again it's based on the interpretation of the person drawing it but I would imagine that they're probably the size of your average snake maybe maybe larger like let's say a bow constrictor but I don't think that it's gonna be that large because this is why the main attack method that this thing has the one known distinct feature of it, and the reason why it's called the jaculus uh, which means literally the word thrown like if somebody throws something but that's uh, in Latin that's what it means is because this is how it attacks rather than let's say your average snake springing forward from let's say a trap and then springing forward and then using its coils to its coiled body to essentially strangle something to death instead this thing also springs forward but it does it with such enough force I mean it's it's almost as if it becomes its own javelin that's why again it refers back to the Latin word thrown because imagine somebody taking a javelin throwing it straight at you that pointy end whenever it hits you will definitely cause a lot of damage same concept but think of it with this particular snake and the way it does it is it springs forward and then it becomes rod straight as straight as a javelin and then that way when it lands either with its tail pointed toward you or in some cases I guess the the front end of the, uh, the face pointing towards you the idea is it'll hit you so hard just like a javelin that it'll create a good amount of damage maybe even impale you straight to the other side so it is a pretty feared creature wherever it was if it's still out there today who knows uh, again the creature I'm going to talk about here in a few minutes the real life basis of it it's it's not like it at a hundred percent but if someone did have an encounter with this jaculus from before then it was a pretty deadly creature in fact there was this guy named Pliny the Elder I think I actually talked about him one time in one of my past videos I can't remember which one it was um, I'm trying to think I think it was the one that the creature that had the uh, unique attack of the flatulence uh, flatulence where it was I believe it was that deer uh, or that ox that was able to create a uh, very powerful uh, flatulence but that was also deadly I think that was the one but in any case Pliny the Elder he described the jaculus as follows he said the jaculus darts from the branches of trees and it is not only to our feet that the serpent is formidable for these fly through the air even just as though they were hurled from an engine so there it is that's the actual attack the way that this thing is able to hunt and kill its prey and do so quite effectively and again there's no poison 
um, it doesn't even bite it seems instead the wound that it creates by hitting the victim straight in its body that's how it causes the death of the victim and that's how it essentially it eats so quite quite fascinating when you think about it no whatever this creature was it did have a pretty effective method of doing so when it came to capturing and killing its prey. Um, no known indication though of how far back this thing has been in existence. Um, no actual, of course, physical evidence yet. No, nothing as far as video evidence, nothing on those lines, but this is at least the closest cousin to it. There is a creature, a snake, that um, has a Latin name, um, which it's a hard one, but I hope I'll say it right. It's called Etisiphus Perinetti, um, which you're looking at a picture of here, but it goes by a more traditional name known as the Fandrifiala snake. And the reason why a lot of people think that this thing is the newest reincarnation of the Jaculus is because it has the very same features of the Jaculus. Like it seems to have some kind of V shaped markings that resemble a sphere on its head, uh, which could be just pure coincidence, but again, whenever people see something like that, they're going to add 2 plus 2 and think that that is uh, as close as it gets to it. And then on top of that, the tail end, parts of it, or if not all of it, seems to have a reddish hue to it, almost as if, let's say, that tail end ended up stabbing somebody. So that is why the people believe in that area, I believe it's found in Madagascar, that this thing, the way it attacks, that's why its tail is that blood red because it literally did stab people or it stabbed some kind of cattle from below. So that's why they treat it as, as a dangerous thing. Although it seems like, I was reading some stuff online about it, that this thing is actually quite harmless to people. Maybe it does, uh, you know, attack some other animals, but it doesn't seem to have anything as far as um, the the actual thing associated with, let's say, the jaculas. But no, because people are seeing the blood red tip, and then in some cases it also mimics. I guess this is a defense of it, but it mimics a twig whenever it comes across. Um, let's say an enemy of some sort or an unknown creature it doesn't want to be hurt by it so it mimics a twig as if it's dead i think that's where people get the idea that this thing is the reincarnation of the jaculus but quite interesting know how you have one mythical creature who know how, how far back it was in existence and who knows maybe still is to this day and then you have something like this living today that people believe is the very same thing just I guess you call it 2.0 like another version of it so quite interesting stuff if anyone has any more information about this fascinating creature the Jaculus please post those comments below it'd be great to hear any uh, information um, I still think that its attack method is by far one of the most unique ones yet when it comes to uh, an animal uh, hunting for its prey so quite fascinating that this random page came across this most interesting creature so all right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.